hi guys how you doing welcome back to my channel so i've been going through my analytics lately and i realized that there's a group of people that i seem to be neglecting on my channel and those are the people between 18 and 25 not really that i've been neglecting them but i've not really tailored most of my content to people around that age group and i still have people who are even younger watching my channel so in today's video i'm going to be talking about things that i have gotten over in my 30s that you might be going through in your 20s or your early thing in your late things and you might feel like oh my god like i can't ever get over this thing or you feel like this is the end of the world or you feel like these things are so important to you but you know as time goes on you might actually realize that you are putting way too much you are touching way too much importance on those things or that those things were actually not as serious as you thought them to be okay yeah so if you like to know what those things are then just keep on watching all right so for me one of the first things that i quickly got over even before i got to my 30s but right now in my 30s i can't be bothered <laughs> i just can't be bothered one of those things um is makeup okay yes i remember when i was in my early in my late teens and in my early 20s i couldn't do without makeup i used to obsess over makeup i couldn't go out without makeup i felt like and the point is that i had been going out without makeup until i discovered makeup you know yeah so, so i always felt like ah like i'm not pretty without makeup i remember then maybe there's some days that i might just you know maybe rush out late and people will be asking me are you sick is something wrong with you are you okay simply because i looked you know way different without makeup and let me tell you guys something i feel like one thing makeup does to you is that the more make the more you apply makeup the more you begin to feel bad without makeup or you feel that you don't look good enough without makeup okay and this is basically what happens with people who are hooked on drugs okay yes people who are hooked on drugs when they're not, they're not on drugs they don't feel okay they don't feel complete because those drugs actually make them feel a certain way that they prefer feeling like okay I hope that made sense but anyway yeah that is how makeup is with you know most people when you apply makeup when you're used to always applying makeup at some point you begin to feel ugly without makeup you begin to feel that you know all your dark circles everybody's seeing it all your your eyebrow your this your that let me tell you guys right now in my life i really can't be bothered the reason why i even have a little bit of lipstick and i did my eyebrows small is just because i'm filming a video and sometimes um apply makeup on your face while filming a video makes your face a little bit brighter okay that's just all a lot, of, a lot of my videos i do them without makeup anyway but i'm just saying yeah so so many things contributed to this you know me not liking makeup as much one of them is age i believe the second one is my husband because he doesn't like makeup he's always telling me you're yeah, prettier without makeup you look better without makeup that's one and the second part on him is that he does not apply anything to his face and to me he's still one of the most handsome men in the entire universe okay if you don't agree with me go and argue with the glasses that you need <laughs> okay but yeah he's one of the most handsome men in the entire universe and he does not apply a pinch of anything on his face okay so it, it got me thinking why do i think that my husband is handsome and i feel like i'm not pretty without makeup like it doesn't make sense you know so i feel like it's just a conditioning that we need to now recondition ourselves to accept our futures the way we are this is the way we were born this is the skin we were born with this is the face you are born with the funny part of this whole thing is that my skin now is considerably way worse than it used to be in my early teens and in my late teens and in my early 20s my skin is actually worse my pores are now huge you know a lot of pigmentation and all that still i am more comfortable going bare skin now than i was that time okay so yeah if you're in, if you're in that category like you're still in your early 20s your skin is still popping please enjoy it enjoy it while it lasts <laughs> okay not everybody's skin is going to change that much but i'm just saying yes yeah, your skin actually changes as you go older it is part of life okay so you're going to have more wrinkles you're going to have more you know scars or whatever from whatever but just make sure you enjoy your skin while you are younger try and i'm not saying that makeup is bad though i still love makeup i still like to put makeup i still like the feeling of you know when you're all made up and you know looking different i still like that feeling but i'm just saying it's, i'm not attached to it again i don't depend on it for any sense of self-worth or self-confidence you know it's just something i do for fun i don't do it to impress anybody like i can't be bothered impressing anybody at this stage of my life so yeah if you're your if you are still young i would advise you to try and detach like try and not attach as much importance to makeup 
like you attach already that's if you attach to makeup okay yeah so the next thing that i actually basically got over in fact this was before i got to my 30s again but let's just say now i'm so over over it and that is the uh, approval of men okay approval of anybody basically okay the only person's approval that i seek right now is god's approval and to an extent my husband's approval because we're married yeah whatever eh, anyway but <laughs> the person whose approval that i seek the most is god's approval i don't seek the approval of men especially like i can't I, I can't be, I can't give any, you know, flying F in any way about what a man thinks about my body, how a man looks at me, what a man thinks about me. Yes, marriage might have also contributed to this since I'm not looking for a husband. So I really don't care about, you know, the male folk in general. But I'm just saying, when I was, you know, younger, you know, when we we're going out, you know, you try to dress up, you try to look good. If a man's looking at you, and like, what is he looking at? You know, all those, all those feelings of, to me right now, I just regard the male folk as just, people like i don't know how to explain this better if you are in your 30s and you are like me just leave a comment in the comment section so let, let me know if someone i can explain this feeling better but i don't see men as um anything important again <laughs> i'm not saying they're not important but I, they're not anything important in my life like the, that their, their <clears throat> approval of me or the approval of what i do or how i talk or how i look or how it does not bother me but yeah like i said in my own case i never really was someone who really really cared that much okay the people who care about men so much like, yeah i wasn't really one of those people who cared that much i've always been myself wherever it is with whoever but yeah i was more conscious of how male the male folk or how men will perceive me or how boys or guys will perceive me before than i am now right now no you know consign me okay uh so yeah so if you are in that stage of your life where you know you know you go out you meet men you are always bothered about what men think or even the men in your life you're always bothered about what they think you know when they tell you do like this you do like that when they tell you jump you jump when they tell you lie down you lie down you know and stuff like that i would advise you that you should just try and get over that okay those people in the grand scheme of things they do not count they do not matter okay what matters is what god thinks about you and what you think about yourself okay yes that's what matters at the end of the day if you're trying to get male attention by going to the extreme or doing some stupid things just stop it it's not worth it male attention is very fickle like there's nothing you can do actively that will keep their attention for that long i'm telling you if you want to be the most beautiful girl in the entire universe you want to waist strain let your waist be two inches while your hips are 52 inches you know you want your boobs to be facing the heavens you want whatever your skin to be popping all those things just because you want a man to like you i'm sorry he's going to find a woman with one inch waist <laughs> okay or ironically he will find a woman with 35 inches waist and he'll be happy with her the way she is okay so yeah don't actively change yourself don't actively actively do things to seek the approval of men because their approval is very very fickle okay just work on yourself work on your self-esteem work on bettering yourself and in the long run it is going to pay you so the next thing that i have totally gotten over is trying to have my life all figured out okay yes the former me, when I was growing up, I always felt, I always felt odd. I'm one of those people, I've, I've said it before on this channel, okay, and some people could relate. I'm one of those people who could not just picture where my life would be in the next five years or ten years. Like, I didn't have a plan. I wasn't one of people that would be like, okay, I want to be a medical doctor, then I want to qualify as a surgeon, and I want to do this. I want to, I've, I've never been one of those people who they have a specific goal that they want to achieve with their life, and they try to achieve it with their blood, sweat, and tears. I wasn't one of those people. My own is, I might wake up today and try to be a tailor. Tomorrow, I'll try to be a baker. Next tomorrow, a YouTuber. Next tomorrow, a, a, a surgeon. Next tomorrow, an astronaut. Whatever it is that I felt in the moment is what I wanted to do, okay? And that meant that the trajectory of my life or the plans for my life or the future kept changing, okay? So, if you are, you know how they say people who do time travel, if you change something in the past to change something in the future or vice versa or whatever yeah that was how it was for me it was always like when i look at my life in the future my life kept changing okay the only thing that was constant was that i was married with kids and that was it and i was making money but how was i making the money i don't know <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, how am I going to make the money? I don't know, okay? So, but right now in my life, I have completely gotten over that feeling. I'm just like, whatever it is that's working for me right now, I'm going to put in my best into it and pursue it with everything I can right now. If at, along the line, I get over it or I'm not good at it or I, do, I decide I don't want it for my life or it's not something I'm interested in anymore, I'm going to move on to the next, okay? I am just going to move on immediately to the next, okay? We cannot all be people, we cannot all be one way, okay? Not everybody has all their lives figured out, you know? And it's fine. Especially those of us who are into art, who are into, you know, media, who are into, those of us who are creatives, basically. We are the ones who struggle with these kind of things the most. And I'll just say to you, if you're a young creative, focus on whatever craft is in front of you, whatever art you want to do, you know, whatever it is that you feel like is helping your creativity with what you want to do at this time in your life, focus on it, put all your energy into it, you know, do it very well. And if it turns out that, okay, that's not what you're supposed to do, you move on immediately to the next best thing. One thing I have realized is that some of the things that we do in this life is actually leading us to where we'll eventually end up, okay? Yes, that's what I believe. It is leading us eventually to where we'll end up. It's just that we have not yet seen it as clearly as some other people see theirs. But somehow, somehow, you will notice that or you will realize later on in life that, hmm, I got to where I am today because of all those things that I was doing and I felt like I was wasting my time. That is reason why, that is how I got to where I am today, okay? Anyway, let me not preach so much about this, but um, if you understand what I'm talking about, please leave a comment in the comment section like i said so the next thing that i have you know gotten over is my body yes how my body looks you know plus size being plus size you know gaining weight not gaining weight losing weight <laughs> this one, this one. i have completely gotten over it at this point what i am now focused on is having a healthy body finish i need a body that is very healthy very optimal health okay <laughs> optimal i need a body that is very healthy because at the end of the day this body is the only thing i have that is mine a hundred percent this body this my body is the only thing that i have that is mine a hundred percent okay right now me and this baby we are sharing the body but you know yeah you get the point <laughs> okay that is the only thing i have that i have that is mine a hundred percent and this body is going to be with you to the very end of your life and you need this body to serve you, you need this body to, to, to know to work for you, you need this body to keep you healthy and alive. So I am focused now on living a healthy life, on having a healthy lifestyle, on being the best version of myself health-wise, healthy weight and all that. I'm focused more on that than how my body actually looks. I hope that makes sense. This whole thing of... Um, um, you know, when somebody is chubby, they're like, embrace yourself, embrace yourself. We don't advise people who are anorexic, anorexic to embrace themselves. People who are, you know, severely underweight. We don't advise them to embrace themselves. We actually seek help for them. Okay? We seek help for them. So that is the same way you should seek help for yourself if you are grossly overweight as well so yeah that's what i have to say anybody that does not agree with me it's fine it's fine i hope you understand me anyway but it's fine let how you look not affect your self-confidence okay derive your self-confidence from other things aside how you look okay yeah but at the same time please and please if you are not healthy Tell yourself the truth, okay? If you are not healthy, if you don't eat right, if you don't exercise right, if you are grossly overweight, just try and lose as much weight as will help you to maintain a healthy lifestyle, okay? I hope that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so the last thing that I have totally gotten over is fake friendships, okay? And I'm saying this in the sense of holding on to friendships, holding on to people who maybe you don't like or maybe you don't really gel with or just just simply because you want to have this person as your friend okay you know somebody is maltreating you you know the person is treating you wrongly you know that the person is not good for you this person is, is is um is um leading you the wrong way this person is involving you in things that you shouldn't be involved in this person is you know i don't know the person's presence in your life is actually not a positive one you know but still because you guys have history or this person is your friend you now stick to the person you know you're not a ride or die friend i'm not a ride or die friend at all i'm not i'm not i'm sorry i'm not like i'm not <laughs> i've gotten over that part of my life like i was that way when i was younger i was kind of person i want person somebody's my friend ah no matter what the person does i will never you know um leave the person or never stay away from the person as long as the person is my friend ride or die like i was kind of person i used to hold friendships i used to even 
inherit my friend's enemies. I used to, you know, make enemies on their behalf. I used to, you know, damn the whole world for my friends. I've gotten over that, okay? I am a good friend to whoever I am friends with until it stops serving the purpose for which that friendship is supposed to serve, okay? Yeah, so it happens to people a lot who, when they're in their early, early um, 20s or in their late teens, they tend to be conflicted about you know losing some friendships because oh maybe we went to secondary school together or we went to you know nursery school together or we are family friends or we are this we are supposed to be close because we are supposed to be close you now stick to somebody who is definitely not good for you i'm sorry that that ship has sailed in my own life so please try and get i'm not saying you should i'm kind of person that i don't believe in um um, quarreling with my friends to end a friendship or, you know, hating on my friends to end it. I'm not that kind of person. I'm the kind of person that if I see that it's not working for both of us, I just quietly withdraw. And like I always say, one day it might start working for both of us again and we'll come back together and we'll be best of friends, okay? Yeah, so I don't burn my bridges, but at the same time, I don't stay attached to people unnecessarily, okay? It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what you do for a living. What doesn't matter to me if your friendship is feels forced, or if the friendship feels fake or it's forced or it's not what it should be, I'm just going to slide out of your life, okay? And moonwalk out of your life as quickly as possible, okay? Because there's no time. There's, there's really no time, okay? There are many other friends you can make in this life. There are many other people who are good for you in this life that you can meet, okay? So, yeah, related to this, because I have learned to let go of fake friendships and, you know, friendships that don't serve me, I, I also look forward to making meaningful friendships, okay? Friendships which serve both of us, friendships which improve me, which make me better, you know, friendships which are generally good for me. Those are the kind of friendships that I seek right now in my life. Um, yeah, I actively seek good friendships in my life right now. The ones that are not good, I let it go, okay? Let it go, let it go. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what you liked about this video or, you know, any points you agree with or you disagree with, um, like I always say in my videos. And yeah, uh, share this video with any young person that you know that, that needs this advice or, you know, whatever. But just um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.